Hi, it's John here from GPS Training. Welcome to the latest edition of FAQs. In this series of videos, I answer the most frequently asked questions I get asked here at GPS Training. The question I'm gonna be answering today is what are the difference between a route, a track, and also a course? These are three ways of loading data onto a GPS unit that would enable it to navigate you around a walk or another activity. So first of all, what is a route? A route is a collection of waypoints or via points that have been joined together. So if you think about it, your GPS is taking you from waypoint to waypoint, from an imaginary flag to another imaginary flag, and then onto another imaginary flag. As you hit a waypoint when you're navigating a route, you get an audible beep on your GPS unit. So the idea is you plan your route, and then as you come across a turning, which is where you put a waypoint in or a via point, it will beep at your GPS unit, you'll have a look at it, the arrow will change direction and you'll then navigate onto the next waypoint and so on and so on. Key things with a route is you are limited to 250 waypoints in a route. It's one of the most common errors that people make. 250 waypoints is the maximum that we can have in a route. So, Nice navigation experience if you're doing a day walk or something along those lines. If you're planning your walk around various footpaths and bridleways, really nice proactive navigation experience. Next thing is what is a track? A track is a collection of track points. So traditionally, a track is what we would be using to um, record the activity that you're doing. So every few seconds, if you're recording your track on your GPS unit, every few seconds is saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And it creates a record of your trip. Traditionally, again, with a track, we could save that track at the end, or alternative, any point during your walk, you can do what's called a track back. You can say to your GPS, take me back to the way it started that walk, and it would navigate you all the way back to the start. Because of this, the maximum number of track points you can have a track is 20,000, because it's making a track point a lot more regular than, um, than, than when, we're, when we're out walking. So, a lot of people have started now to navigate tracks. So what you can do is create a track on Garmin Basecamp or download a GPX file or something along those lines and we have a track. Why are people navigating tracks? The key thing is we can have 20,000 track points in that track and that's why a lot of people are using tracks rather than the routes. But the key thing is it's a silent navigation because traditionally a track comes from a record of where you've been walking and it's making that record every few seconds. It, wouldn't have, it can never have an audible beep because otherwise it'd just be beeping at you all the time. And the key thing with a track, if you are navigating a track that you pre-planned or downloaded from the internet, it will be a silent navigation unless you go off track. If you go off track by a certain distance, you'll actually get either an audible beep or a vibration on your GPS unit. So when a track's used, people navigate tracks when you're doing something like a long distance trail. So if you're walking the Havens Wall Trail, for instance, you're more than likely download a GPX file of that. And it really should be a track. Because 90% of the time, you're not gonna get lost. It's well waymarked, it's well trod underfoot, and the GPS is just there, just in case you go off track. And then it will give you an audible beep, say you've missed the turning or something along those lines. So if you download GPX files from the internet, they should really, for long distance trails anyway, the majority of the time, they should be tracks. So again, in the online resource here at GPS Training, we have a GPX library where you can download pre-planned um, activities of all the long distance trails, all the majority of the long distance trails in the United Kingdom, and we do these as tracks. So a track is what we will use when we're navigating a, a long distance route or something along those lines. Because the key thing is you can have up to 20,000 track points in a track. And then finally, what is a course? Now a course is something that's come over from the world of GPS watches, isn't it? So if we transfer a route or a track to your GPS unit via either the Explore app or the Connect app, it appears in there as a course. Again, that's the way that GPS watches work. Wherever you send to a GPS watch, it ends up there as a course. But they've also this functionality now in GPS units. So if you send anything via an app, which is the Connect app or the Explore app, to a Garmin GPS device, it will end up there as a course. And then the navigation experience of a course is very, very similar than what we find with a track. So again, silent navigation, unless you go off course in this case. 
So I hope this clarifies the situation, what the difference between a route, a track and a course. But to quickly summarize, if I was going for a day walk and planning my own walk, you'll see I normally will use a route because again, I get this audible beat. It's a bit more of a proactive navigation experience. It was doing a long distance trail or a, an event or something like that, where actually I'm not more than likely not going to get lost but I just want that reassurance to be notified if I go off route, I would use a track in that instance. And also, again, when I'm doing a long distance route. Key thing is then, if I'm, if I'm downloading a GPX file off, say the instance, the Pennine Way, I would be able to do that within 20,000 um, track points with a route limit to 250 waypoints, you wouldn't be able to do that. And then finally, a course. A course is just something we get when we send it via one of the mobile apps to our Garmin GPS device. I very much hope this latest edition of FAQs has helped in some small way. Again, there's lots more inst instructional videos of how to use your GPS unit in the GPS training online resource. There are some free videos in there. And again, if you can subscribe to that, you get access to all the videos. And as always, many thanks for all your support from not only myself, but the team here at GPS Training.